Hello everybody, this is Sangeeta Saxena, editor Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from DSEI Japan 2023. And we are here with Chibba, and who else but we have with us Randy Roth, the Regional Director, India and Asia Pacific International Sales, Global Sales and Marketing. And he's here in Japan with an aim to understand and make us understand what it's all about. So, Randy, welcome to ADU's chat room. And what does it mean, you know, uh, Japan, DSEI Japan for Boeing? Well, Konnichiwa, Sanjita, and everyone else out there, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, wonderful to be here in Japan, especially for DSEI, a show that is seeing tremendous growth. Uh, if you look at the last time this event happened in 2019, compare it to now in 2023, certainly a bigger footprint more attendees uh, from both industry and the JMOD uh, and you know folk, other key officials here in Japan. Um, I think it's a reflection of, first off, uh, the three strategic documents uh, in Japan and what that leads to. I also think it's a reflection of the growth in Japanese industry uh, and also just the market size. Uh, I think it's really significant that in Japan, you know, they're talking about potentially doubling their defense spending, you know, from one percent of GDP to two percent, uh, and all of that I think has come together to really create a great opportunity here in Tokyo at DSEI. Uh, and I'm really going to be interested to see what it does two years from now and how much further growth they might have. I'm sure, and uh, you know, just to understand, Randy, that Boeing has been here for seventy years, isn't it? So what, what does it already have in Japan? What does it expect to have in Japan in the future? Well, it, like you say, Sanjay, a really, really decades long partnership here in Japan with Japanese industry and Japanese government. Um, Boeing, of course, having the, the benefit of having such a large commercial business and defense business and of course services businesses. Uh, I'll speak to the defense side, but before I do that, you know, tremendous commercial uh, partnerships that Boeing has out here in the region, especially in Japan. On the defense side, you know, we're really honored and humbled and also understand the responsibility that comes with so many Boeing products that the JMOD and the Japan Ground or the Japan Self-Defense Force has chosen over the past to utilize in their pursuits and their national security uh, you know, concerns. So you have so many different products. You have F-15s that have been here for quite a while. Um, you, now, you have Chinooks, the largest fleet outside of the U.S. of Chinooks in the world. Uh, recent additions, KC-46. Japan was the first international KC-46 customer. They have V-22s, the one international uh, customer for Boeing for V-22s. They have H-64s. They also fly some of our unmanned systems. So a very broad and deep portfolio of Boeing products. Uh, again, makes us very happy to be part of that, but we also understand the responsibility that comes with that uh, to ensure that those continue to provide the capability that they need. And what, did, what have you got to offer to them for the future then in that case? Well, a lot of it is, uh, some, so some of these programs like the F-15, the F-15J has been on the island for quite a while. Uh, and as with other countries in the region, you know, having the good fortune of getting to work the whole Asia Pacific region, uh, F-15 is one of those legacy platforms that continues to evolve based off of technology uh, maturation, based off of threats that require us to invest and develop more capability. So one of the things for Japan is upgrading their F-15 fleet. We're in the middle of doing that, working with the U.S. Air Force, working with the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, uh, working with, you know, obviously Boeing and some of our industry partners to provide more capability for, for their F-15s, uh, similar to what we're doing other places. Same thing on Chinooks, uh, you know, they are now going to have, they're looking at uh, the opportunity to upgrade that platform uh, to a, a digital cockpit and some other capabilities. Um, so lots of opportunities there. And, and with, like we were talking previously, that increased defense spending and part of the um, focus, we believe, and talking to the JMOD key officials is filling out their formations. So KC-46, we know that they're interested in having a greater capacity for aerial refueling, you know, quite a potential to 
field more KC-46s to the Japan Air Self-Defense Force uh, and several other opportunities throughout the country. And, uh, you know, which also means that uh, at the show we've been seeing the Japan and especially ATLA has been trying to project a make in Japan. Now, what does it mean for Boeing? How, how do you plan to match steps with this need of theirs? Well, it goes back to, like you talked about, this decades-long partnership we've had here with Japan Industries. So, Japan has, uh, you know, every country does have their own unique capabilities. One of Japan's is they have a really good manufacturing capability. So, if you look at the Chinooks, I said that it was the second largest in fleet in the world behind the United States. Uh, the Chinooks that the Japan Air Self-Defense Force and Ground Self-Defense Force fly are all actually licensed co-production here with Kawasaki Heavy Industries. So uh, it is very much a make in Japan. And that was not even a policy aspect. That's really just a finding the capabilities, the talent uh, and that meets their needs. Same thing for their Apaches. Those were produced here and F-15, a lot of work on the F-15. Uh, is done also uh, here on the island. So, so not a new phenomenon here in J Japan, but certainly something they do have indigenous defense uh, capabilities, ind industrial capabilities that we continue to look at and leverage um, in support of what they're trying to do. And in, in continuation to it, you know, what I wanted to understand from you was that uh, is Japan uh, planning something on the offing with, uh, you know, you as the partner in uh, unmanned systems and in artificial intelligence? Because that's what we heard that there's going to be a major U.S. collaboration for AI. Ah, I had not heard the major uh, U.S. collaboration, but it is certainly an area of interest of theirs, unmanned systems. It, Part of it goes back to their ideas of uh, affordable mass and how do you get more systems in the air with, with a constrained or somewhat smaller uh, self-defense force in terms of people. So trying to get more capability out of each person that you have, providing them unmanned capabilities. It is an area that has tremendous talent and opportunities with AI because uh, it isn't the original unmanned systems you know, were unmanned, but there were a lot of people you needed to actually operate them, maintain them, launch them, do all that. Uh, now with the evolution of some of the intelligent algorithms, behavioral algorithms that we are able to put into some of our unmanned systems, trying to take the, the burden off the other pilot, ground operator, whoever it might be, uh, Japan does certainly, you know, is looking at that as part of their future. And that's part of the discussions we have at a show with DSCI is to have those conversations and try to determine what's the best path forward. Is there something that we can help with? Uh, and if there is, then how do we shape that? And in addition to that, in continuation, what is the research and development uh, you know, plan you have with along with Japan? Because Boeing in every country, it is, uh, you know, it has a R and D, uh, you know, plan. So what is it for Japan? So uh, part of that, a lot of that is on our commercial side. We have uh, some research and development pieces we do here. Um, on the defense side, we do have uh, R&D centers with Japan. Um, but most of it is really, again, working with those other industries that we have, some of our partners on our other programs, to see if there are areas that we can work together. Uh, it's, not, it's not really focused on a particular capability at this point, uh, really just looking at um, finding those sweet spots of needs that they have that we can work together on. And yesterday when we were uh, in a chat with Atla, there was one little conversation which came up, which was that, uh, you know, companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martins could, uh, you know, make uh, Japan as one of their uh, very major, you know, places for uh, producing for the world. Now, uh, will that happen sometime in the future? Will you are a market uh, not only for them, but uh, they create a market for their exports? I would love to produce for the world. Uh, but I mean, right now it's really focused on producing for Japan, like we talked about some of those other ones. Mm -hmm. um, there's always that effort. Now, there are, there are suppliers and people that we engage with here in industry that do provide for you know, platforms that go throughout the world. They're not just for Japan platforms. Uh, that are then used on every platform that we make, uh, but yeah, not I'm not sure about a, a producing for the world opportunity here just yet. 
But that's wonderful actually to hear all this right from the horse's mouth because then when you're at a show like this, there are lots of things which you are here see. And uh, when you hear these things and you come to know that, you know, which is actually going to happen in the next few years. Randy, it was wonderful speaking with you. And I'm sure that when we meet at the DSEI Japan next time, you will have much, much more to tell us. I'm, I'm sure it won't even be that long. I seem to <laughs> seem to see you on every continent. So I'm sure there'll be another continent coming. All right. Thank you so much, Randy. Thank you very much for being on our chat show. See you again. All right.